Hey everybody, hope you're all doing well today. This video is now the third time I'm trying to record it due to technical issues, so hopefully uh, I'm not too cynical and jaded in this one, much like all the other videos. Anyway, this video is hopefully intended to help you out with issues with connecting to your virtual machines. Now, I have noticed a lot of people have been having issues where they'll be working on their VM and all of a sudden something will happen and they can no longer connect. They will get a identity aware proxy error. Basically, you click the little SSH button and you cannot log in anymore, right? It has happened to everybody, has happened to me as well. So don't feel too bad if you're happen if this is happening to you. But what's going on is that you are effectively blocking SSH access on your servers. Now, what's going on is that you probably have done some work with the UFW firewall and you allowed the Apache ports or you allowed some other port and you forgot to open up the SSH port, which is 22. Now, easy to overlook, but just get in the habit of opening up that port 22 whenever you create a new virtual machine. Now, there are a couple of things going on here. First of all, you might say, well, my firewall is active, right? So, or I've, I've opened that port, right? I went to the VPC network, like you told me, and I added port 22. So here is default allow SSH port 22, should be fine. Um, this is only one step. Remember in Google Cloud, we have the external firewall, which is this guy here, the VPC network, and the internal firewall on each and every virtual machine you create, right? If you create a new one, you have to redo the whole thing. Now, there are a couple of things that you can do here. First and foremost, these are virtual machines. If you haven't done much with it yet, you could just delete it and create a new one. It's not going to cause any issues, right? Um, so this one here is a brand new virtual machine micro instance spec'd out exactly like we've been doing in class. It is an Ubuntu 22 machine, 30 gigs of space, um, HTTP and HTTPS ports allowed. Nothing fancy, right? And micro instance. All right. So basic brand new fresh machine. I've done literally nothing with it. I didn't even install Apache. So going to the IP address will basically result in nothing. While this is transferring, I should mention too, if you do get this error, but you have done other things on the machine, they are still running and they're still active, right? So if you have created a web server or Rails app or whatever, whatever you're doing, I mean, this applies to all of my Google Cloud classes, they will still be running. You just don't have access to do this anymore. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. Okay, so brand new virtual machine. You know, let's say that we are the web class or, you know, even the cloud class or any class where I have you use Google Cloud and you open up a port. So what are the steps that we have to do here? Well, we have to enable the firewall, which is what really kicks off the problem here. So sudo ufw enable. We see this error message or this warning message, and hopefully we realize that enabling the firewall could do something to SSH. Now, firewall is active and enabled. Depending on how long you have this up and running, you might not see this error for a little while, you might see it immediately, it just kind of depends. So what happens is we are now blocking every single port that is not open by default. The SSH port is blocked. Now, the reason for this is most web servers, the rule of thumb is to block every single port and open only the ones you need. Port 22 is a point of entry into our servers. So typically it's blocked by default. All right. Now let's keep going through the typical process that you probably would be doing. So let's go sudo ufw enable, and we're, we're going to pretend this is a web server, right? So 80, oops, sudo, heh, my bad, clear, sudo ufw allow 80. Let's add 8081, 8080. Okay, so we are doing, you know, the virtual hosts assignment, for instance, we've got different ports open. Right, we could also open up 443, because maybe we have an HTTPS connection we need to handle. Right, so we have web server ports open. Life should be good. We create our index.html, we install Apache, we do all that fun stuff, and okay, tired, close down for the day. So I'm gonna go ahead and just close this. I go to bed, and now I wake up. Oh crap, I need to finish the assignment. SSH in. Now, again, depending on a multitude of factors, this may immediately cause an issue. This might wait until you restart. Typically, you know, it's going to happen right away, but this port is now blocked. All right, so we're going to get a big fat error message right here. Life is not over at this point. We can still recover it. Now, again, we could 
just delete it and restart if we haven't gotten very far. That's going to be the quickest way, honestly. Or we could troubleshoot using the serial console. Now I'll pop the link to this in the description and like kind of a short guide for the steps. But basically, this is just another entry point into our servers, which we can uh, we can enable and we can get up and running. All right, so yep, yeah, there we go. Error message here. Connection failed. Port 22 is blocked. You can retry. You can retry without client identity. It's not going to matter. We have no point of access in. All right. Good point to mention, too. Get in the habit of making backups. If this virtual machine is up and running for a while, if it is something where you know, you're doing a lot of projects on it, make sure that you archive everything and download it to your computer. All right, so get comfortable with the zip command or the tar command, some way to basically download all your files in bulk, get them onto your computer, get them somewhere else to be backed up, right? And the reason why I say that is, okay, this is an easy error to fix, right? So this SSH problem, what if you accidentally delete it? So I was tired, I clicked delete, fine, let's get rid of it. Oh crap, there's my term project, right? Or you know, maybe you delete your project by accident or intentionally, but you forgot that this VM was there. Or you run out of credits, um, Google closes your account because you have no more money in your, you know, in your account. You go to get more credits from me, and then you log back in, and it's possible they have deleted all these resources, which you, know, you spend a lot of time with. That happened to me with the research project at one point. It's very frustrating. <laughs> but don't think that these are there forever. These are on somebody else's server. You are at their whim for this. OK, so get in the habit of backing up. Anyway, what we have to do is stop this machine because we need to edit it. All right, so this could take minutes, could take seconds. Just kind of depends on how quick Google is. With the Rails instance, with um, you know some of the heftier ones, for some reason, it tends to take longer. Not sure if that's always the case or it's just how quick the servers are that day. But, you know, it could be, you, you probably have all seen this by now, right? So, okay, back after a minor cut. So even better, I had an issue when I was running through my demo. So <laughs> that's just going to be great. Um, what we need to do is to go ahead and make sure that we have access to the serial console. So what you need to do with your virtual machines is to stop them. All right, we need to open up access to that serial console, add a small bash script to add a username and password combo to our machines, and then log in that way. OK, so what I've done, and I already did this off camera because I wanted to make sure that it worked. Um, I think what happened is I made the password either too complicated or I used a special character that was coming through a little funky. I was being blocked, but machine is stopped. All right. Now, I clicked this box here for remote access, enable connecting to serial ports. Uh, this is basically going to make it to be as if you were sitting in front of the machine itself, you know, display in front of you, seeing the live events happening. Um, if other people log into your machine, you can see what they're doing this way as well. Now, that is enabled. The other bit we need to do, too, is we need to add in this bash script to the metadata section. So right, that's all the way at the bottom. And we see metadata, automation, startup script. Now, what this is doing here is it is adding your username with a password to the system um, and adding you to the pseudo group. Now, by default, your account basically gets packaged up with Google authentication credentials sent to the virtual machine. You get user access or sorry, super user access when you log in. Um, but by nature of the way they set these VMs up, you do not have username and password access. Okay. We need to manually add that in. And one thing I will say here too, make sure you make your password more complicated than like temp12 or something like that, because you know this is a port in which a botnet could, for instance, be scanning the IP range of Google, see that you have serial open, maybe get some information about your user account, and then try very simple passwords. And if it's simple, you, know, you could definitely be a security risk. I've had students in the past get their VMs taken over by botnets, for Bitcoin mining, um, you think this isn't going to happen, but Google is a really big target and their IP address ranges are well known. So make this a little complicated. You're also going to disable it and delete it when you're done. So what's going on here is again, it's literally just this script here. And again, if you're a Bash user, this probably looks familiar. If not, this is basically a startup script that's gonna run when your system boots up, run some Linux commands to add your username, create a password, 
add you to the user group. And if you're advanced using something like Z shell or corn shell or something like that, you just have to translate these commands for that. But if you're that advanced, then you probably know what you're doing here anyway. So I'm going to go ahead, copy this password here, because I'm going to need it. And we're going to save this and then start the machine up, right? Because we now see this button is active. However, the machine is stopped, so we can't actually connect to it. So we're going to go ahead and start the machine. It's going to kick off. And then we will have access. Now, what we're going to see as well, you know, once this is running, is we will pop open the instance here through the serial console. This button is only active by clicking the VM, by the way. It's not going to be in the little drop down for SSH. So this is going to go to the serial console relay, and we're going to see effectively a live feed of the startup. And it's going to look like nothing's happening for a few minutes, or it might be immediate that things are going on. Um, you might just see a blank space here. Just hit enter or hit any key and the login is going to pop up. Now I'm going to put in my username. So Eric Fredericks underscore Fredericks. Um, if you don't know your username again, click the activate cloud shell command and it'll pop up the terminal down here. You'll see your username. Okay. So I put my username in something else popped up. So hopefully this doesn't screw us up. <laughs> Paste the password in that I had. And then we are logged in to a terminal. And we still see a whole bunch of stuff going on, because again, this is the background information that you don't normally see. All right, clear. So I have a login to the terminal. And it's just straight up normal Linux commands, nothing special here. All I need to do, sudo ufw allow 22. OK, hit Enter. Rule added. It was not enabled before. You now have SSH access, OK? So we're going to exit, close this, didn't need to exit. I can click SSH. This should pop up just fine now. All right. Literally, all we're doing is adding that port 22 rule to our VM. OK, so we're going to let this pop in here. Hopefully, it doesn't take too long, because I want to show you the last step as well. OK, there we are. Now, stop the machine once you are good. We're going to get rid of terminal access through the serial, because we don't want that open for anybody else, especially if you used a poor password in that case. All right. So hopefully this doesn't take too long here. Up, up, up. One of the fun you know, recording bits while this is going my video froze during my first attempt this morning. So. 30 minutes of video down the drain. Come on, please stop. All right, well, let's go edit, and then I can show you what you need to do. Again, wait till the machine stopped before you save. Should be stopping soon. Uh, we're going to unclick remote access. We're going to scroll down to our startup script and delete it. And then once we are sure this is stopped, we're going to click Save. And that's all we need to do. Well, this is just going to take some time, apparently. I'm going to end the video there. Just as a reminder, if you see that Cloud Identity Aware proxy issue, it is not a lost cause. You can still access through the serial console. Anyway, long enough, long-winded enough at this point. Hope you have a wonderful day. Hope this is useful. And happy virtual machining, I suppose. See, that button is now disabled for us. Bye, everybody.